Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to imagine what the universe or at least our own galaxy is going to look like in about 1 trillion years from now. That's a pretty large number to imagine, but let's take it one step at a time. Welcome to What The Math. And to try our best, we obviously have to go to the future and imagine what all of this will look like in about 1 billion, 2 billion, and then 1 trillion years from now. This is actually going to be mostly based on science we understand today, so maybe in about a decade from now, this will have to change because the science will probably change as well. But let's start small. Let's start with the simple fact that Earth will very likely be gone by then. It's either going to be swallowed by the ever-expanding Sun, or possibly will experience a collision with something like Mercury, which will also change its orbit as well. Either way though, there's a very very low chance for the survival of planet Earth. But the solar system will probably still be around, not the way that we know it today though. First thing first is that our Sun will look something like this, a very small star known as a white dwarf. And it will continuously lose its heat and become darker and darker and darker. As a matter of fact, it is at some point going to become so dim that it will become what's known as a black dwarf, but not in 1 trillion years though. After 1 trillion years, the Sun will still be relatively hot and be the size of about planet Earth, probably several thousand kilometers in radius, and basically remain like this for a really, really long time. But any planets that are still in orbit around the solar system will obviously be very, very cold because this will not be producing nearly enough heat to warm them up. Now, here's the thing about the rest of the galaxy. The night skies in our galaxy will look completely different. Most large, bright stars that we see today and the stars that we take for granted will actually be all gone. And the vast majority of the sky will be very, very dim with only a few stars that are visible to us. Now we're going to go to the location where we expect um, the sun to be. And we're going to imagine what the night skies might look like. From a galaxy that we already have discovered in our own universe, this is the galaxy known as IC1101. Now this is kind of what the center of this galaxy looks like from, I guess, um, just the middle of the space. But let's try to land on the planet here just to see what the night skies will look like as well. So here is a typical planet that you might actually discover in the Milky Way, our own galaxy, about a trillion years from now. A planet that seems to have some sort of volcanism going on, and that's quite possible. But what's different here is the night sky. The night sky is completely dark. After about a trillion years, we expect the Milky Way to actually have collided with all of the other galaxies that are near us and to have created one major mega galaxy, very similar to the galaxy we're in right now, IC1101. If I stand on the surface of this planet right now and look into the night skies, I'll see this. A very unusual sight. Not a single star that's visible, but there is still some kind of a light coming off, and those are various red dwarfs and various other stellar remains that are still sending the light to us. And the center of the galaxy will also be indistinguishable. As a matter of fact, trying to see what the center is will be very difficult. Now, it doesn't mean that we won't see anything, we'll just really have difficulty telling what we're looking at. The stars that are still here are all very small red dwarfs that survived for so long. And for the most part, the stars that we have today in the Milky Way will all be gone. There's only a few possible remains out there. One of them is actually a really interesting star known as VB10, about which we'll talk about in one of the future videos. But everything else here will be kind of a blur, just like you see in this video. But interestingly, this blur will actually contain trillions and trillions of star remains and various red dwarfs that are still kicking around. But here's what's really interesting about all of this. If I actually try to zoom in on any part of the skies here, I'm not going to see any more galaxies. There are no other galaxies that are visible. And that's because after about a trillion years, every galaxy that is uh, currently visible to us is going to actually be beyond 
the scope where we can actually see them. The universe will have expanded so much that you'll just see this unusual yellowish night sky. Not a single galaxy, not a single nebula, not even a single supernova, because there's just no more stars left to explode. It doesn't mean that it might not happen, it still might, especially if two stars collide, but the chances for it happening are so much lower than they are today. And the only light that is being generated in the new Milky Way galaxy is coming off these stars right here. Red dwarfs are going to be pretty much everywhere. It's going to be the only main sequence star left, and the only other stars that are going to generate any light are obviously going to be white dwarfs like our sun. Now, these right here are going to be the prime source of new life. As a matter of fact, we think that in about a trillion years, the chance for life around red dwarfs is going to increase exponentially, possibly up to a thousand times higher than it is right now. Red dwarfs are going to be basically where we expect to find life and obviously a lot of aliens, potentially even intelligent aliens. Because there are so many red dwarfs already in our galaxy, the chance for having millions, possibly billions or even trillions sources of life actually is going to be much higher than it is today. But if there are aliens that are going to be around to see all of this, they're not going to be able to explain most of the astronomy as we know it today. They're not going to understand why the sky looks like this and they're not going to know galaxies, they're not going to know supernova, they're not even going to know the expansion of the universe because the background radiation that we still receive today that was started by the Big Bang is going to be insignificant, it's going to be extremely difficult to see or detect it. It's even going to be extremely challenging for them to understand how the universe was born because the signs of the Big Bang will be gone. And so for the most part, any future extraterrestrial intelligence is going to most likely have completely different cosmological ideas from what we have today. And this really gives you perspective. What if there was life billions of years ago and there was intelligent life that could actually see something that we can't see today? What if our own understanding of astronomy and space sciences is actually also a little bit wrong in that sense. But anyway, that's of course a speculation. And if one day these aliens are able to actually leave the galaxy and look at it from the outside, this is what they would see. This very unusual blurry blob. No other structure, no other formations, no supernova, no anything. Not even nebula that we take for granted today. And that's because all of the things we see in the night sky today, like nebula, are actually formed by various stars that are still around, especially large stars. All of these stars will be long gone and become black holes or neutron stars. And even the space itself will actually have cooled down to almost zero degrees Kelvin. It's currently about 2.7 degrees Kelvin, mostly because of the radiation that we still receive from the Big Bang. But that will also be gone. But I guess the saddest part of all of this is that the new alien species that might exist in this new galaxy will have never experienced or understand how stars are formed as well. They will not know how stars are created or were created because they will not see anything. The lowest estimate for the time until star formation stops completely is basically right now, one trillion years. There's no more gas left to create new stars, and everything that's left will simply not be enough to create new stars. So most of the stars that exist at one trillion a year period will basically be the last ones ever. Although it's still possible for some other stars to collide with each other and create new stars, or at least create a large enough explosion, the chance of it happening is very, very, very low. But nevertheless, it is kind of ironic that this period in time is actually when we expect to have the most alien life possible. All of these thousands, millions, billions and trillions of red dwarfs that are going to exist in the new Milky Way galaxy will have a very high chance of developing life. So, even though life on Earth as we know it will almost certainly perish and no longer exist, there will be a tremendously high chance of various life types developing around red dwarfs all across the new galaxy. 
trillions and trillions of planets will be habitable and will have really high chance of creating new life. But most importantly, what we could do for these future aliens is help them understand what they're missing from their understanding of the universe. Help them understand what galaxies are, what is a supernova, what are nebula, and how the universe was created with the Big Bang. None of these things will be possible to learn in the future. So maybe if we send enough transmissions to space, one day one of these future civilizations will be able to intercept it and learn about the universe through history. Maybe, just maybe, they'll even get to watch this video and potentially want to subscribe to this channel just like you should right now. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hopefully now you know what the galaxy known as the Milky Way will look like in about a trillion years. And hopefully now you know a little bit more about the universe as well. In one of the future videos, we're going to investigate this in a little bit more detail, so do come back and watch the next part. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.